Recently, myself and Dave Bruns from Excel Jet had a discussion about the percent of function inside Excel and specifically how it works inside the group by function because it doesn't always behave as we might expect. There are a few quirks in there that can catch us out and I thought what a great topic for a video. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look deep at percent of and group by and see how they can work together. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's start with a simple example of group by. On the left, we have two columns. We have a column for the product and a column for the values. And let's suggest that we want to show the total value for each product. To do that, I'll type equals, group by, open your bracket. The first argument is row fields. These are the values that we want to group by. So I'm going to select my product column. The next argument is values. These are the values that we want to group. So I'll select the values column. The next argument is function. This is the calculation that we want to perform. Now you can see here that we have a list of functions that we could use. Now this list isn't exhaustive. This is just a suggested list of functions. In this scenario, we're going to use the sum function. We'll then close that bracket and calculate. And you can see we now have the total sum by each product. Now let's suggest that we now want to show the percent of that value. Let's edit our formula and we can add into our function argument, the H stack function. This means we can perform multiple calculations on our values column. We've got our sum, let's also add our percent of. We can close the H stack and when that calculates, we now get a column for the sum, but also what percentage that sum is of the total. If we look at Klimt, for example, the sum is 200 and 200 is 17% of 1,205. Now let's suggest that we want to add a count as well. So I'll edit our formula. I'll add another function of count. When that calculates, we now have the sum, the percent of, and the count of the number of rows. Let's also add the percent of our count column. And we want to use our percent of once again. When that calculates, we have the sum, we have the percent of, we have the count, and we have the percent of again, but that isn't the percent of the count. If we look at Klimt, there are eight records for Klimt, and there are 20 records in total. So the percent of should be 40, but it only displays 17. This percent of is the same as the previous percent of. So how can we fix it? We might think that the problem is down to the values that we have provided in our function, because sum, percent of, count, and percent of are all applied against our values column, which means we can go and edit our formula. We're going to add H stack again. Now we need to have one column for each of our functions, which means for sum, we're going to pass across the values column. For percent of, we're going to pass across the values column. For our count, we might want to pass across our product name. And then for the percent of, we want the percent of the product name. So let's select that. We'll close the H stack and then we'll calculate. You can see something isn't quite working here. We have sum, percent, count now shows nothing, and percent of shows the hash div error. And we think, well, that makes sense because count is currently displaying zero. So let's edit our count function so that it's now count A. This means it will count anything, not just numbers. When we calculate that, count A now works, but the percent of still doesn't work. So how does percent of really work? Well, let's go find out. Percent of returns the percentage that a subset makes up of a given data set. Notice how percent of is not one number divided by another number. It has a very specific purpose. Percent of has two arguments. The first argument is data subset. These are the values that make up the total numerator. Then we have data all. These are the values that make up the total divisor. What do we mean by that? Well, if we had the percent of function and for our data subset, we passed across an array which contained two twos. Then we had our data all argument that contained an array of five twos. 
when that calculates, it would return the result of 40%. Effectively, percent of is performing the sum on the first array and then dividing by the sum of the second array. So we could say that four divided by 10 is 40%. So percent of isn't one number divided by another number, it's the sum of the total data subset divided by the sum of the total data all. Now, how does this relate to the group by function? Well, group by has lots of arguments and we're only going to be looking at the first three. The first argument is row fields. These are the values that we want to group by. The second argument is the values. These are the values we want to group. The third argument, is function. This is the calculation to perform on the grouped values. Now for functions like sum, average count, and so on, it passes all of those values into that function. However, in the case of percent of, it passes across two sets of values. It passes across the data subset and also the data all. So if we were to use group by, the first argument would be the row fields. The second argument would be the values. And then in the case of percent of, we need to look at each product individually. So for the climped product, it's going to filter to only include the values which relate to climped. This becomes the data subset. Then it will pass across the second argument of data all, which includes all the values. Therefore, percent of calculates as 17%. And if we head back to Excel, this is exactly the value we see for Klimt. 200 is 17% of 1,205. But how does this help us if we want to calculate the percent of the count? Well, we need to approach this in a different way. I'll clear out the previous group by, and let's start again. I'll type equals, group by, open bracket. For our row fields, we want the product. For the values, we want the values and then for the function we're going to use h stack and we want to use the sum we want to use the percent of we want to use the count a and we also need to calculate our own custom lambda function so lambda opening bracket now we want to pass across two values we want to pass across the subset and also the data so let's call our two variables subset and data. And then on those two values, we want to perform the count A on the subset, and we want to divide that by the count A of our data set. So we can close our count A, close our lambda, close the H stack and close the group by and calculate. And we now get the correct value because for Klimt, eight is 40% of 20. In this scenario, we have ignored the percent of function. Instead, we have created our own lambda function, which uses count A to calculate the total numerator and count A to calculate the total divisor. And then that performs a standard division of one number divided by another number. However, there is another way that we could approach this. Currently, our values argument is passing across the value as a number. If we want to calculate the percentage of a count, we don't want to pass across the value, we want to pass across the count. That means that each row should have the value of one because each row exists once. Therefore, in the case of Klimt, we would pass across into the data subset all of the ones that related to Klimt. And into the data all argument, we would pass a one for all of the other values and that will give us the 40% result that we expect. So let's head back to Excel and let's start with a new group by function equals group by opening bracket. For the row fields, we're going to use our product. Then for the values, we want to pass across four separate columns, one for each of our functions. So we need to use H stack opening bracket, for our sum calculation, we want to pass across the values from our values column. For our first percent of, we also want to pass across that same column. We then come to our count. The truth is we could use values or product for this. I'm going to select the product column. That means we will need to use count A to count the number of items. We then come to our fourth column. We want to generate an array that contains one for each row in our data set. 
Now there are many ways that we could achieve this. I'm just going to show one in this video. I'm going to enter an opening bracket and we want to check where product is equal to product. Now every row will equal every row. Therefore, it will return an array of true values. So all we need to do is to add minus minus at the start of this. That will then convert our true into a one. So that will give us an array of ones. We can then close our H stack function. The next argument is the function argument. Again, we need to use our H stack function because we want to pass across multiple functions. On the first column, we want to sum. On the second column, we want the percent of. On the third column, we want to count A. And then on the fourth column, because it is an array of ones, we can once again use the percent of function. I'll close the H stack, close the group by and calculate. And once again, we get the correct result. For Klimt, eight is 40% of 20. So that is how we can use percent of inside a group by. Yes, there are a few quirks, but now that you understand percent of and group by, you can now use these functions to their full power. Now, if you like this video, you should check out our Excel Academy. In there, we have a course called Dynamic Formulas Unleashed, and it contains everything you need to truly master these types of dynamic array calculations, which means you'll be able to stop searching YouTube in the hope that somebody has already solved your exact scenario. Instead, you'll be able to build up solutions yourself because you'll understand how Excel works. Just head on over to excelfthegrid.com and check it out. Now we've got loads more videos on our channel and I think you should check out this one next. It contains lots more advanced array calculation techniques. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.